but at the same time, it's kind of deceptive because you're playing against people you've never seen play before. And excuse the drop frames. A little bit of an issue on our back end again, but the one that we see time and time again, Forzier and Kinstar are fighting at the Shark against... Hey, this is going to be crazy at the rig. Of course, they've qualified. Here, it's Kiryachi and Letwick pushing from Slurpee Swamps onto the rig. I'm not sure if this is before or after that fight has occurred. And this is one of those late rig pushes as well, meaning that both teams are going to have some nice ammo to par with. A lot of the people who land rig end up getting their shields all the way the late time of the early game. And now you just saw those white tags on that one individual rank at the satellite station. It's going to be very hard for these guys on the defense side of Kriachi and Letwick to survive. And the storm coming in, though, this is going to be one that you, we saw them in the opens. How many times they were taking the boat in the storm going for one of those coastal rotates? And it looks like they might have that opportunity, but they've got to finish this fight. And if anybody's going to finish fights fast, it's Letwick and Kiriachi. Zone's very, very close. They have that good rotate afterwards as well. But a fast finish will be very good for them. And there's Ooh. the triple tag. Storm should take out that individual unless he found floppers. Kirachi's warmed up for game one. The aim on points, two runners, and he tags them right up. But he, they escape, so he doesn't finish them off. He's going to try to lasso them in and get them back towards him. Letwick seems to be in a fight. Can he support from the high ground? Letwick now no more shield. Yes, Kirachi is going to have to back down no he continues on the offensive two 1v1 separate because they both know how low they are this is confidence in motion but at the same time time is ticking they've already taken about 40 damage each the factor of slurpy swamp not that far away that's where they came from oh the good angle switch but it doesn't pay off he tried to get a little angle cheeky where that player would not know that it was coming finally they get through, and I think he did have shield this time, so he found something or got some time to pop stuff, and now they're back together. Still so much time taking this storm. Of course, again, Slurpee is looming, so they don't have to worry too much, but if they can't actually come out of this alive, nothing matters. It's going to be a big investment that needs to pay off now from the up top side. Shields are already popped, but an instant one for one elimination. These guys both get the cypher from them too and are very good on timing now to leave, but they need to act fast. Zone once again pulls close to them, which is very good, but they're not going to have a say on claiming a location this far away in Storm. <laughs> they did win last weekend and they won in this amazing fashion. Two wins and a second place. And after their first week, actually qualifying for the Sunday finals, they did in the warmups, but didn't do it in week one. So they're trying again. A nice pick off quickly. Not there for experimentation. It'll be like this game after game after game. There are no W key lobbies anymore. Everyone's fighting for the top spot. People will be playing a little bit more aggressively, but these people that are gonna be spectating right now, Scully, save it. If they're having trouble with Storm Surge now, they're going to have to fix it next game. They're going to be running with almost the same game plan. And it looks like there's a team coming in that takes a big RPG from Save It. Scully, very low. Our first really early mid-game fight that's not, you know, on even ground. And now, here we go. It's going to be an RPG that comes over again. The combo shot, not there. Scully heals up. A lot of materials left over here. I don't think these guys need to take the fight, but they're playing defense. No, Storm Surge, actually seven below. It locks in and locks up. 12 people need to go down. They need damage. There it is, 27 above, but it quickly drops down again by four on the top right below your minimap. You can see where it is. These guys desperately looking for any tags possible, but now every duo knows there's an RPG in play. Save is not going to get these free rockets in anymore. Yeah, good thing here that they're encroached inside of this lodge in weeping woods because they could get a free box fight where there's no third party opportunities unless they themselves get involved they're gonna continue to get rpg tags and i think they've done it i think they've survived the surge now it's time to wait them out before they make the rotation forward but surge comes in steps and this is just the first i think easy one the next one half and half zone the fifth one now these are the captains we'll be tuning in with they have the best position on the server choose the launch pad to get across to a better spot though on top of other people gonna be letwick actually leading the charge here actually will be one to land first though get a little bit of a freeze as we keep moving in 41 people left alive we can see the storm surge though and just talk about that real quick they are up but it is dwindling now box to box together have all the ammo and the loot available in the world but need to get into a position to use it properly this tack is going to be good on traveling 
and just shooting people box to box. But what Kriachi really wants to do is get in a spot with Letwick, get based up, look back, and beam with that AR. Yeah, and there's different delays. Right now we back up in time to Queezy and Trulex who have a decent position, but not all the inventory slots complete. Low materials, they have the Harpoon, which is fixed this week. So hopefully they can find an impact, but not moving when zone is right on their back is going to be tough for them. How do they rotate from here? I don't see a path there. Finally, maybe up and above to the left. There's a pad down below, community, but he gets beamed down the shotgun shots before he takes off. Five HP now, and they've got to land. Trulex does find a lair. And a very good catch as well, making a floor out and then starting his tarp on the box over just so Queezy can come in, drop down, and then start moving. 43 damage above Storm Surge, so Tix might start coming in very soon. And we talked about Kiriachi's game plan. Queezy doesn't have the same one. Not much ammo available. They're going to have to play box to box, very close to other duos, because if they get a kill, they're going to have to get a refresh off of it afterwards. Right now, Trulux is moving way across. Anyone could invade this big tarp. There's a lot of distance between these guys. They have to be very careful looking box to box, already a foreign ramp in their actual tarp. And now, finally, together, they still have to move through. Yeah, and now they only have just wood to work with. They are in zone already, but he goes all the way to the back side of it. Now they can look back, and if they made this gamble correctly, it's going to continue forward. It does, so they can now get way ahead. Nobody else, everybody else stopped at the front of that freeze. They've got to find an impact within the next couple of zone movements, because otherwise they're out of it. He's going to use that harpoon to get into the old box, just a floor protecting that, and he does get in, but no, not on the right layer, not on the right side, that player escapes. Yep, that one shot might be so crucial and potentially end their game one because if he hit it, we saw that shield break happen from Trulex's POV. That could have been a big refresh. That man gets away with so much brick that we're being seen used just wall to wall right here. Now out of mats completely, just playing with the clothes on their back and they have to find some type of way to weave things together on ultimate low ground, looking at the zone line, hiding from height. This is a horror movie. They get mats. The harpoon is there. The floppers now refresh as well. It's oh, just no. one, but there's someone else in the box and Queasy blocks off his teammate. He goes down just to try to survive get more placement 14 players left alive the zone closing in that's the last hs to use and now crouching in he is safe but has limited time available the zone bounces back but he has just five two mats to his name finally some time to take the minis but importantly when queasy went down there no sorry when trulex went down there he split all the mats and then he had to move instantly so he didn't get any of those that he split off to his teammate now finds a safe haven, a shed, a shack to hide in before moving forward, gets that last mini off and then breaks through at the front of zone. And another player on the side is the drum gun. You gotta be careful here. This thing can melt you in a second. And if you run out of match, there's nothing to do. It's hard find who pushes in. Kiriachi is still up in the final. It looks like 1v1 now, and he's gonna take this. There's a tree in the way, but he does complete. Kiriachi and Letwick off their semifinals performance. They continue and they're still feeling it today. These guys, we saw them off spawn, just splendid individual 1v1s. And it's going to be a POV of Maestro on height, actually. I think I won't spoil exactly where these guys ended up, but we'll see how they hold up height. We know Kiriachi ends up winning. Yep. And he's down his teammate. This is Styler who took out Aqua and, St or not, Aqua, yeah, Aqua and Stompy. So obviously they have that mythic minigun. And this might be the player who ended up in second. No, we saw hard find two in towards that end game. Minzo up alive as well. Here actually in Letwick down on that mid ground. This was the final zone. And you can see Sven. Who else in this game? Raze. And this was all like it was just Maestro kind of providing the pressure. I think the only full duo was Kiriachi and Letwick. I'm wondering how these guys even pull it off from ultimate low ground. This man is four tiles up, has a minigun, is bullying every single person on the server. But from what it looks like right now, Kiriachi and Letwick are the only duo left alive. Everyone else is solo player, including Maestro on height. And all the pressure led to him trying to drop down. I'm not sure why he goes fully down. And then Letwick falls in the zone. It's now Kiriachi versus Maestro. He launch wow. pads up takes height <laughs> and even though he has the minigun the pressure is too much because he has no materials to work with Giriachi still does and he just lets himself fall the tack shotgun that we saw in his inventory so many times when we checked in with him he cleans up easily i mean the name is maestro but i don't think he was in control orchestrating that fight whatsoever and right now, the winners, you already know from first game, stay up top. Kiriachi, Letwick, 17 points, 7 elims, and a victory royale.
And then on the backs of taking out the Titans, Stompy and Aqua, who won week two, Maestro and Styler with 15 points, Magnus and Minzo in third place. And a lot of people missing. Hard find an Astro up there. Ump, Lafai, and Matzo are up there as well. Jory Ray and Rays have been performing better and better every time in fifth place. But I'm seeing crew and Chapix with a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, we haven't seen them too much now in top 10. Let's see if they can continue. I mean, they have a pattern. Every week, I see their name once or twice on a leaderboard update. 